In this video, we'll be discussing initial transmission control setup and basic transmission control tuning parameters. It is assumed you have already watched both our initial project setup and navigation video as well as our engine setup video and have performed the basic idling engine setup. You can see we have Tuner Studio open. Since we will be covering transmission control setup, we need to verify we have the transmission tuning drop-down selected and transmission tuning menus across the top of our screen. We also need to verify that we are displaying the transmission control dashboard. At this time, we are displaying our main dashboard showing primarily engine parameters. Select the trans gauge cluster. Now you can see we are trans displaying transmission control parameters. At this time, if we power on the ECU by simply turning on the ignition key, it should connect. I'm going to do that now. In the initial project setup phase, you would have already set up this project and it would have already connected to the transmission controller. We're going to assume you've already done that. First, we're going to verify that our transmission controller is set up for our intended transmission. We will do this by selecting Trans Controller Setup and Base Settings. Ensure this setup screen matches the included settings for your transmission. Currently our startup guide includes screenshots for E4OD and for R70W. The only parameter on this screen that should be unique to your setup is your wheel diameter and final drive ratio. Enter those parameters now and click burn. Close the dialog. At this time, you should have a pen and paper handy or your cell phone handy to document this process via video. What we're going to do is we're going to calibrate our gear selector uh, sensor so the ECU knows what manually selected gear we have selected. We will do this by observing displayed shifter voltage here and moving the vehicle through all the gears. At this time, place the vehicle in park, reverse, neutral, manual drive, or drive, manual first, and manual second, while documenting these voltages. Okay, after doing this and documenting what voltage was associated with what manually selected gear, we will go to Trans Controller Setup and Gear Position. Enter the voltages you observed for each gear. In these particular forward transmissions, we don't have the ability to select third gear or fourth gear. We simply have D and an overdrive cancel switch. Enter the voltage observed in D for fourth gear voltage and simply pick a value for third gear voltage roughly halfway between second gear and fourth gear. It will never actually see that voltage, that's just to keep everything happy. After doing this, click burn and click closed. At this time, we should be ready to start the vehicle and also verify our vehicle speed signal is coming in properly. So we are going to start the vehicle. Uh, observe engine RPM here. You should see that come in. And we do. For the next step, the vehicle driven wheels need to be off the ground and the vehicle needs to be safely supported on jack stands. Also, chalk the non-driven wheels safely so the vehicle cannot roll. Place the vehicle 
in drive. Ensure your foot is on the brake at this time so the wheels do not turn. Okay, let off the brake and the vehicle speed signal should begin to register. Verify that your displayed vehicle speed is relatively close to your speedometer. If it is, you're finished. If it's not, then we will go back into Trans Controller Setup, Base Settings, and alter either our wheel diameter or final drive ratio to make the speedometer and vehicle speed signal agree within, you know, a couple miles per hour or so. If your vehicle displayed vehicle speed display was faster than your speedometer, then you would decrease your wheel diameter or increase your final drive ratio. If the value displayed was slower than your speedometer, then you would either increase your wheel diameter or decrease your final drive ratio. Click burn when finished and close. Allow the driven wheels to stop and you will likely use, need to use your brake to do this before placing the vehicle in park. Verify the driven wheels have stopped completely before placing the vehicle in park. And at this time you may shut off the engine as now we are simply going to go through some basic transmission control tuning parameters you likely will be interested in. And simply key cycle back on so we're live. The primary tuning items you will be interested in are your shift curves. We have upshift curves for first gear, up and downshift curves for second and third gears, and a downshift curve for overdrive. These curves are, are simply uh, vehicle speed versus throttle position. At higher throttle positions, we hold a gear to a higher speed typically. The higher value curves are your upshift curves, the lower value curves are your downshift curves. While these are tuning parameters, it's recommended you maintain roughly the same split between these curves so the transmission is not constantly hunting. Also notice, here in our third gear upshift curve, at relatively low throttle positions, we shift at high vehicle speeds. This is to prevent an upshift into overdrive at high engine torques, mainly to protect the transmission. This is optional that you do this, but this is known to be a weaker spot on most of these transmissions, and we recommend you do this. We have done the same thing for the fourth gear downshift curve, and we downshift out of fourth gear at a relatively low throttle position. Wide open throttle shifting is controlled through these shift delays and max RPM screen. Above a particular throttle position threshold, upshifts occur at an RPM instead of a vehicle speed. N notice for first and second gear we actually have reasonable shift points for this application, while for the third gear upshift we have a higher than reasonable speed to prevent a full throttle upshift into overdrive. The wide open throttle shift throttle position sensing setting can be found under shift settings, and in this particular case is set to 85%. This should be adequate for most applications. Your torque converter lockup settings can be found under Trans Controller Setup locking set lockup settings. And here we have minimum and maximum throttle position sensors setting. We will allow lockup, and we simply enter whether or not we want to enable the lockup for a given gear. In this base file, I only have it enabled in fourth gear, and we set both the minimum RPM and VSS. That lockup can occur. Um, the final tuning parameter we expect users to be interested in is line pressure. This can be set up as a simple load base curve for all gears, or 
we can have different line pressure settings for each gear. Our base file is already set up to allow different line pressure settings for each gear. Lower line pressure will soften a shift. Higher line pressures will make the shift more firm. This is a tuning parameter, but you likely will not deviate that far from the settings in our base files. At any time, when you make a change, always be sure that you save the file. And remember, when multiple controllers are online, such as the case with all of our, with our, your powertrain control system, please make sure that you have selected the tuning file you want to save. Here you can see we actually have the engine controller selected. Since we've been working on transmission settings, you would pick trans from the selection bubble here and give this file a unique name that means something to you so you know this is your transmission settings that you wish to keep on that date. When finished, simply click Save. And at this time, provided the following checks checked out, you're ready for your first test drive. Start out slow and verify everything appears to be working correctly. If the transmission settings are at least workable for now, it's recommended you primarily focus on engine tuning until you get the engine dialed in and then you can tune the transmission to your liking. Should you have any additional questions, please visit the tech support forum at stingerperformance.com. Thank you.